Alright guys, so one of my favorite things to do with the rabbit fat, well actually the only thing I do with the rabbit fat, is making soap. So I'm going to do a quick little video on how I go about rendering it down. I just got back from my girlfriend Annette's and she has saved me all of her rabbit fat from this season. So I've got a big huge bag of it here. It was frozen. Um, I do kind of prefer it a little bit more frozen than what it is now. I just left it in the refrigerator because I don't have the freezer space for it. So it's a little soft. But I'm going to go ahead. I have this KitchenAid mixer here that I found at a thrift store. It was like 10 bucks. Not the mixer, but the, the grinder attachment. So I'm going to go ahead and just grind all this down. And once it's into the bowl and it's all ground up, I'll show you again how I go about rendering it. Um, basically, you render it the same way you render any other kind of fat. You just chop it up small. That's why I use the grinder. And then um, <clears throat> I put it in a jar inside of a crock pot and I let it cook down. <clears throat> but that's, <clears throat> that's the basic process. And I will walk you through it as I progress in here. For now, I'm just going to grind all of this big huge hunk of fat and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got all of my rabbit fat rendered down. Uh, one thing to note about this KitchenAid mixer or um, the meat grinder, since it is just plastic, a lot of times you get a crack right here. My old one had a crack in it. And just a hose clamp around this will help to kind of support it and keep it from cracking or if you have a crack to keep it from getting bigger. So from here with my ground rabbit fat, all I do is just put it in these mason jars here. And then I put it into a crock pot and I fill it with water and I let it render down on, on low heat for, it usually takes about a day for it to all render down. Um, now before in the past I was just putting it straight in the crock pot with just some water and letting it render down. I found doing it this way I got a much better quality product. And I do put a flat lid on top of this. I don't seal it down with a band or anything like that. I just rest a lid on top of it to help any condensation from falling into the jars. Um, if you've never made rabbit fat soap, you are missing out. It is amazing. It is super soft, super conditioning for your skin. It's probably my favorite bar of soap that I've ever made. Um, just, And it's nice to be able to use another part of the rabbit that would oftentimes just get discarded, thrown out. But here we go, I'm packing them up. And did I mention that I used to just put it into the, into the crock pot with water? Okay, so when I was putting it into the crock pot with water, I felt like it overcooked a little bit. Um, the lard that would come out was a little yellow. Um, and I just, it always kind of smelled a little rabbity. It, it worked fine for soap still, but this way I feel like the water insulates it a little bit more. And then there's no straining water out at the end because you're not adding any extra water. You know what I mean? Hopefully I can get that last bit in there. If not, I'll just go ahead and refreeze that last little bit of soap. And this usually takes about eight hours to a day. We'll see how fast it goes. I don't remember, honestly. I just kind of put it in there and then go about my day and I come back and look at it here and there. Super easy, super simple. And you can render down any other kind of fat this way also. You don't get the cracklins in this, like what you do in like pork fat or something or other types of fat like that. Last tiny little bit. And then I gotta clean out that, that grinder. All right, there we go. All right, I'll be back once it starts cooking down to show you guys. One second. All right, so it's been about four and a half hours since I've put the rabbit fat in here um, into my crock pot with the water in it to render down. Let me go ahead and show you how this looks. All right, so I just put these flat lids on here just to kind of keep any condensation out. And then I filled my crock pot to almost to like the rim as high as it would go without risk getting water into the jars. And I have it cooking on low, low heat right now. So most of the fat has broken down, melted down. I'm going to go ahead and give this a stir to kind of break up those chunks.
See, it's nice and clear. There's really no smell to it at all. And I'm just gonna let this go for a little bit longer. and see, see how much of that I can get out of there. Look at this chunk, this big old chunk. I might eventually, once this gets rendered down even further, I might just drain, strain this rendered fat out of there and condense these chunks into another jar. I don't know, I'll decide in a little bit, but I'm gonna let this go for another hour maybe. See where we're at. Look at that fat, that fat, nice and clear. It looked like water in there when I opened it up before I stirred it. Of course, it's all cloudy now. But, all right, I'm gonna close this back up. Let it go for a little bit longer. If it starts to discolor at all, I'm gonna turn it down to keep warm. But right now, it's on low and it's working just fine. All right, so this has been going for about nine hours now. We ran out, so. Um, I checked it earlier and I broke up those chunks that had formed again. Oh, that's really hot. So here's the fat. I'm going to go ahead and strain it out. And so you're going to spill it all over the counter, aren't you? I'm not. Not the first rodeo. And there we go. I think most of it got rendered down, so I don't need to put it back in there. I'm not really seeing any other globs, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do all of these. And that is how you render out rabbit fat. And then you can add this to any of your soap recipes. I think uh, soapcalc.net has a, um, a lye calculator that actually has rabbit fat included in on their fats or their list of oils. So if you're unfamiliar with the sap saponification rate, of rabbit fat, you can just go to soapcalc.net. That's what I do. How are you storing this afterwards? This, I'm just putting it back in a clean jar and then I just keep it in the freezer. Supposedly you don't really need to. Um, you should just be able to close it up and seal it, but I just keep it in my freezer, just, you know, because that's where I keep it. Are you gonna let it cool and skim it? Uh, I won't need to because there's nothing else in here. It was just fat. Before, when I was mixing it with water and doing it straight in the crock pot, oh, okay. I did have to skim out the water, but just straining it should be enough. There's no extra water in here. Okay. So, yeah, it might end up with a little bit from what was what came off of the meat, you know, or rinsing uh, when she rinsed the, the meat and the fat and stuff like that when she harvested it. But for the most part, it should be nice and clean and clear. But, oh, no, there is some water in there, you can see. Yeah, I'm just going to say it. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I'll just let this cool, and then sometimes I put this in the refrigerator and let it solidify, and then I'll take it out, and uh, that's how I separate it. But thanks for watching.